Well, good morning, everyone, as we come together at the start of a new week on Monday, the 24th of August. And today is a day on which we remember a Bartholomew, the Apostle of Jesus. Now, um, Bartholomew is often also known as Nathaniel. So uh, our readings this morning change in their cycle to remember Bartholomew. Um, but when we get to John's Gospel, he'll be known as Nathaniel. I know, it's confusing. And uh, so shall we begin with our opening response. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger for ever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass, we flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old and endures for ever on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Shall we keep a few moments of silence? As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our psalms this morning begin with Psalm 86, and I'll use a refrain at the beginning and end of the psalm. And the refrain, All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my soul, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and listen to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my distress I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor any works like yours. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wonderful things, you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name for evermore. For great is your steadfast love towards me, for you have delivered my soul from the depths of the grave. O Lord, the proud rise up against me, and a ruthless horde seek after my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a token of your favour that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped and comforted me. 
All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. God of mercy, who in your great love drew your Son from the depths of the pit, bring your people from death to life, that we may rejoice in your compassion and praise you now and for evermore. And then our second psalm is Psalm 117, and the refrain is simply Alleluia. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, praise him, all you peoples, for great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures for ever. Alleluia. Alleluia. Gracious God, we praise you for your faithfulness, and pray that every nation may find your blessing in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So our reading this morning is from the Old Testament readings from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, and beginning at verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for a night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely, Lord, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as I said earlier, today is a day on which we uh, celebrate and remember Barnabas the Apostle, and in John's Gospel he's known as Nathaniel. So, a reading from John chapter 1, and beginning at vo verse 43. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. So we come to the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, the fruit that will last. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, the fruit that shall last. Shall we pray? Holy God, we do thank you for this new day and we thank you for the sunshine of this morning. We thank you for a new week. We thank you, Lord, for our worship together yesterday. We thank you for those who attended church in Fiskerton and for those who attended church online. And we thank you for our gathered community together. <coughs> Pray, Lord, for ourselves as we seek to work out how to share our faith and how to be faithful, confident and joyful Christians in this age. Lord, help us to put our confidence in you. Help us to know that you are leading us and guiding us and drawing us to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our schools, for school staff, for children and for their parents as we move towards the start of term. We pray, Lord, for those parents who are anxious about sending their children back to school. And we pray for them that they might take the step of being able to introduce their children back into an environment that they have missed so badly, so many of them. We pray for staff too. We pray, Lord, for their anxieties as well, about the number of children, and the number of people around, and trying to keep a kind of sense of um, there still being a virus around and needing children to be cautious and needing other staff to be cautious too. Lord, what we know is that um, it's important for our children to be in school. And so we pray for them, that they may, may be able to take that step. But we pray, Lord, too, for those children who have chronic illness, for those who need to continue to be shielded and for some considerable time. We pray for them and their parents that they will receive the support that they need over this next few weeks and months, particularly as most other children go back to school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We 
in our cycle of prayer today, we continue to pray for um, all those who work in the NHS. We pray for all those who are working in our hospitals and for those who are travelling to work as we speak. For those who work in our communities, our dentists, our pharmacists, our doctor's surgeries. We pray for all those who work in the ambulance service and those who uh, do hospital transport. We pray for those who volunteer in the NHS, for those who work in the uh, blood transfusion service and the blood donation service. Lord, there are an army, really, of thousands of people. And we pray for each one of them today, that they might give of their best. They might be courageous where they need to be. But Lord, in everything they'll be wise and compassionate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we remember Barnabas, the Apostle, we give you thanks for the work of your church. Those who are Apostles now, who are pioneers, who are planting seeds of faith right across the world. We pray for those going into new territories and new places. We pray for those who have been newly appointed um, lay ministers but who will be ordained in September and October who are due to be ordained in July Lord so much has been held up and we pray for these folk who have been training and waiting and waiting we pray that when they come to the day of their ordination it will be indeed a glorious day Lord in your mercy Hear our prayer. Lord, we remember all those among us who aren't well at this time. We pray for those who are in hospital. We pray for those at home unwell. We pray for those who are anxious and fearful. We pray for those whose mental health has suffered over this last few months and who are finding it hard to kind of face the future. We pray for those who are bereaved. It feels like so many around us at the moment and we pray for those who have been bereaved in this last few months, so who have then had to go into some form of lockdown and have not seen people and have not been able to share their home with the person they loved because they're gone. And so, Lord, these are desperate times for some folk and they've had to adjust to so much. So, Lord, bless them this day with the strength they need to face another day and to live in and through another day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you gave to your Apostle Bartholomew grace truly to believe and to preach your word. Grant that your church may love that word which he believed and may faithfully preach and receive the same through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you for sharing in prayer with me this morning. It's good to uh, be able to do that and to share with you. Um, I will be back this evening at 7 o'clock for Compline. So God bless all of you. Have a lovely day today uh, and may God's peace be with you. Lots of love. Bye now.